And we had our were first you? date in January, January and, 20th. And where were you at the time? Bridal Vale Falls in a borrowed car. We didn't have a car, neither one of us. <laughs> was she the one that you were dating when I took the car up? We didn't have a car I when we got took, married. I didn't have a car. I know, mm -hmm. I took my car up and I bought an orchid for you to give your date and I took my Chevy station wagon. You were in Germany when we were. When you got married. Yeah. But this was, see Dean was already in Germany and the kids and I were out in Wendover. Well, our first date was January 20th. I left February 1st to go up to Ogden to do my student teaching at Weaver High. I was up there for 10 weeks. You sent me a valentine that said, okay, what was the? Something about. Do you want to be my valentine? Take a number and stand in line, you know. <laughs> Some that was what thing. was. But anyway, we came back and, and then it kind of got whirlwind. We started going out quite a bit. But, but the funniest part was the day after I gave her the ring. And I, I gave her the ring. She went, oh, this is such a surprise. And I'm so surprised. Well, I was. And I know you don't believe it. The next day we ran into her best friend and... Jean stuck her the ring up under Betty's nose and her friend looked at her and said, See, I told you you'd take it. <laughs> but meeting her parents was, that was the worst thing ever for both of us. You want to bet? You should have been there to meet the socially conscious pretentious Mrs. Van Every yeah. coming to Wendover and finding out her youngest son was marrying a hick from a nowheresville. So what about your her parents? Well, I I called, I, I kept asking her, have you talked to your parents about it? I had met them once. They'd come to the Sunday school class once and I'd said, Glad to meet you, glad to meet you, you know, everybody leaving the classroom. And so again, with no car, we borrowed her brother's car. We and borrowed her brother car. was back there at BYU at the same time. And uh, so we headed south to Richfield and got as far as, as uh, Nephi before I finally convinced her to at least call him and let him know we were coming. And... Uh, she called, and her mother said, oh, well, maybe I'll have to stay home from Relief Society because she'll be here before I could get back. And so we pulled up out front, and her dad was out working in the yard, and he sees his daughter. He sees a car that looks familiar. He sees this strange little fat fart getting out of the driver's side. You weren't fat. Well, I wasn't then, but, but anyway. I came up and wanted to know what we were doing and finally, instead of saying anything, realizing the mother wasn't there, we asked if she left a note or anything. She hadn't. She'd just gone ahead and gone to Relief Society. <laughs> and so, not knowing what else to do, Jay held the ring up in front of her dad's nose and the first thing he said was, what are you damn fool kids done? And it went downhill from there. He was the state clerk at the time. and You didn't said, ask him permission? No. I never met him. <laughs> but anyway, I, I uh, we got inside and he was the one to schedule where the reception would be held. And, and this one put her under the couch. And he said, well, is this a hurry up job or do we have time to schedule it?
I'm sitting there thinking, what have I got myself into? And then they had a parakeet that was just inside the kitchen door. Dean, can it bother you to sit right there? If it won't bother you, it won't bother me. But anyway, the, this parakeet's cage was just inside the kitchen door. And <coughs> it wasn't any further from where we were sitting than between you and Gene. And he goes into the, into the kitchen, and a loud, booming voice, Well, Fritzy, what do you think of him? Damn bird goes chirp, and he's, I didn't like him either. <laughs> that was it. That was the... So, that's when we got started. What did you do? Leave after that? Pretty much. We, pretty much. We had to get back and go to school. We had borrowed a car. It was finals week. Did you ever talk to your mother? Yeah, she came home, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, she got home. Hello. She didn't have a lot to say. This is a public announcement regarding what? Regarding what? Oh, really? Dean. Oh, I'm thrilled to death with that information. Oh, you don't know how much I appreciate you calling me. Goodbye. Hey. Dean, I've got uh, <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, I've got everybody talking. Now uh, you tell me, sit down, back down in that chair and... I tell you something interesting? Yeah, tell, I've heard Gene's version of uh, when you got <laughs> married. No, you got it, my version of when I married Alvin. No, this was earlier, another time you told me oh. about meeting Well, I could Dean. probably... I could probably give you a good version of how she married Al. No, I want to hear how, how you two, we've gone all around the table. Finally. All the way around the table? Yep. Not you. Well. So when was the first time you saw What was here? Probably 1950. What was that year? Well, it would have been 55. 53. 53. 55. No. No, we got married in 55, and I'd known him a year. So, that was your problem? No, I graduated in 56. And I don't care when you graduated. We got married in 1955, That's and right. I had known him for a year before that. We met in 1954. Did we? Yeah. I didn't think we ever met. That's the way it happened, yeah, I remember. Where did you meet her? Actually, in uh, my house. Was it your house? Yes, we came with uh, Bud Taylor and that and Jack guy. Criswell. And there was somebody else. I don't remember. It was it was one of those. Oh, it was Max Waringen, wasn't it? I never. I was never buddies with old Max Waringen. But he knew. I mean, he knew you. Yeah. And he knew you. And, and half that gang that you knew were out at Wendover. No, Bud, what's his name? Bud Taylor. Bud Taylor, the, the, the Western Singers. And then there was a young couple that we invited to the house. And we visited with them. And, and they got married. I can't, I can't even remember their names. Oh, we're just really swift. Uh, all I know, it was just a rocky, a rocky, uh, it wasn't a rocky marriage. The marriage worked out fine, just a rocky romance. Why? Well, I'm just teasing. <laughs> just teasing. Actually, actually, I married Jeannie for her kids. That was the reason I married her. And my dad, so he'd have a deer hunting partner. That's right. Got married and I went on a honeymoon out out to Grouse Creek. Jeannie, Deer hunting. And Jeannie didn't even come along. Yeah, we heard about that on your anniversary. Yeah. L Lynn's version of it. <laughs> Scared the snot out of me. <laughs> what part?
I scared you. And you were laying there patting me on the belly and giggling. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. You never did that to me. Who could you? Oh, you that on? was his excuse. He said, oh, I was dreaming I was snuggling up to Jeannie. Oh. And then I knew I wasn't because her tummy didn't feel the same. Mm, how about yeah, you know, Dad used to bring beds when we used to go camping. Oh. <laughs> that must have been when it happened, huh? Yeah. I'll be jiggered. Yeah, we were in the grass break. All I remember is we shot a, a rabbit that we were going to make stew out of, and we seasoned it in the dark and put so much pepper in it, just about it would burn your tonsils out. Other than that, it would have been good stew. That I, I, this is true. Sounds horrible. <laughs> this is true. It was a little cottontail. And this one goes after it with a 45 pistol. And Dad says, oh, don't do that. You'll blow it apart. And he says, no, I'll just part his ears. And then an old sharpshooter, that's exactly what he did. You just see these little ears sitting here, and all of a sudden the rabbit's dead, and these ears are out of here. <laughs> Didn't hurt a bit of meat. Too bad it didn't taste good. <laughs> we got grouse that year too, remember? Or sage hens. Sage hens. Sage hens, yeah, we got a sage yeah, hen. Yeah, Dad brought home about three sage hens stuck in his coat. He had a lovely <coughs> honeymoon. Hmm. I didn't hmm. think much of mine, but I had a nice one the first time. I know what it was. We had just moved over from where Uncle John lived, Stevens Court. Mm -hmm. We moved over to that one over on 32nd or wherever it was. 30, 29. Wherever it was. Was Lynn living with you when you were over there? Yeah. Yes. Stevens Village? I thought you called it Village. Stevens Village is what they called it because there yeah. was. Uh, five apartment buildings. With did you? Did you? Never went over there. So you you met her after we'd moved. Twenty nine, mm -hmm. twenty nine South. And that was that was a, because I can remember putting the dog on a Christmas tree, decorated, mm -hmm. in the back of the pickup mm -hmm. and driving it over there and only breaking one bowl. Mm -hmm. Hey, so that must have been the year before. Yeah. That would have been, that would have been, fifty four Christmas of, fifty four. Because I left with you school year 54, 55. Had to be 50. Had to be 53 because. No, because if, if, if we met in 53. 53. We got 50, married you were in 55. Five, we met in 54, 54. And you were already in on 29th Street. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see, in 53, the school year 53, 54. I was living with Fred and Kermit in Grantsville. So it was the fall of 54, spring of 55 that I lived with you. Yeah. Then I came back and lived with Andy Ish in the fall of 55 and graduated in 56. What a life. No, I, I remember one time you brought two or three guys there with you and one of them slipped and dropped the F-bomb and then spent the next half hour apologizing to Gene for doing it. He was so embarrassed. That would have had to have been Bud Taylor. I don't remember. Jack Driswell was dating the guy. Clarabelle LaCow. No. Is that her name? Clarabelle? Sure it was. Clarabelle, yeah. But The other gal, what was her name? She was the pretty one. Don't know. She wound up married to uh, the the guy who said you didn't know Swearingen. Yeah, but I didn't think old Jack Crystal even knew her. Yeah, he did. Huh. The memory's too foggy. We should have done this. 40 years ago, and we might have remembered. <laughs> wow. 
that's where journal writing is. That's really. Right. I've never been able to do it. To do what? I write. Write in a journal. I started one and got I got so involved in the mission, especially those last seven months when I was the branch president, I never wrote a word down. I it just too doggone busy. And there were some interesting things, but you know, the one I really feel bad that we have so very, very little of is Dad's story. You know? What do you mean? He never wrote anything down. Yeah, I did. Not much. I know, not much. Mother wrote more about him than he did. Yeah. I, I tell you, I've got one where he starts out and saying, you know, what a, a beautiful girl Jeannie was and what a good-looking boy you were. <laughs> I wasn't even mentioned. <laughs> well, that's all right. All I heard was my son, the bishop, and my son, the state high councilman, and my son, the bishop, and my son, this, my son, and... Uh, that's my, it's showing pictures, slides, of being on your boat. And that's my son, Fred. And then he had me. I kept him humble. That was my job. Uh, you kept me guessing, too, always saying I was adopted. <laughs> I only told you that once. <laughs> no, more than once. Once a week. <laughs> once a week. Only once, Fred. Hey, and Fred? you. Oh, go ahead. I had wrecked Dad's printing press, remember? I was going to print something on that press. Then he had it out in the garage. He and Hal Daniels were going to start their own business. And I did something and broke the press. This must have been an arm. Mm hmm. In the garage outside. And you said, you ruined Dad's press. And you kept saying it to me. And I said, that's all right. You were adopted. <laughs> <laughs> and he's never let me live it down. I, I need to ask you, do you remember that blazed face horse? I can't even remember who it belonged to. That Out what? in Wendover. Wind, had one Please brown eye and one blue eye. No. You don't remember that? No. Do you remember chasing me down with it? No. Was, Was he, he riding the horse? I not remember it. <laughs> Was he riding the horse? Yeah. Oh. Scared the crap out of me. Oh, you were just a scaredy cat. I was afraid of horses, so I don't know about that, Lynn. Ever since I got run over with that one in Grantsville. <laughs> well, who ran over you in Grantsville? A horse. Well, I know, but was it just running? No, I was, I'd been out riding the thing and uh, I lifted up the clothesline wire hoping to, it would walk under it and it did, but then it caught it on the saddle and uh, then it panicked and I was out in front of it and all I remember is tumbling, looking at its belly. Oh but boy! He, he, oh, I've done that before. He didn't. Uh, he, you know, he didn't step on me though. But I, I didn't like horses like after to go that. Horseback riding. Well, I fell off one out of Keller's and it came back, looked at me like idiot. What are you doing laying on your butt? Okay, we're just well, the about night to the end of the day. We graduated from high school. My mother grabbed up my. They gave us the folder, they ran in.